Christ Life Ministries International brings to you a program, Hearing Jesus, with Prophet Zadia Kale Alpha. Position yourself in the dimension that will guarantee you nothing less but the life of God. That dimension is the voice of His Son. Cultivating the true pattern of Christianity through sound doctrine for fellowship with the Spirit and proficient ministry among our hearers. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and by chance there came down a priest. Well, let's take it from maybe 30. And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. From where? From Jerusalem to Jericho. And fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Okay? And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. A priest, then a Levite. Okay? But a certain Samaritan, a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion for him. And he went to him and bound up his wounds pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own beast, that is his donkey, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the next day when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves. <laughs> Glory to God. 37. And he said, He that showed mercy on him, then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. 38. Praise God. Now, so you have a Levite, you have a priest, and the Bible says a certain Samaritan. But you see, the wounded man, the man which fell among thieves, was a man from Jerusalem. And now, in this parable, they are showing you how Jerusalem and Samaria are now uh, in harmony. Praise God. the revelation of how the Samarian can show mercy to the one of Jerusalem. But again, that he uses that for an example tells you of the antagonism that existed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. That city was bound spiritually. It was spiritually bound. If you all will agree with me, and if you are students of uh, church history, you know that about 31 and 33 AD, that's when the Son of God, Jesus Christ, left the world. Okay? In his bodily form, he left the world and ascended to the Father. He was caught up from the Mount Olives by a cloud of the Spirit. And he's now seated at the, the right hand of the Father. If I may relate that timing for you <laughs> and the man, Simon the Sorcerer, okay, you will know by virtue of his personality while Jesus was on the earth traversing Jerusalem 
traversing Judea and Judah. And once in a while, he would pass by Samaria. You can imagine there was still a people that claimed to be God. There was still a people that claimed to be God. Yet God in the flesh was, a, was present <laughs> in their very space of Abud. Now think about it. That about that time, Simon the sorcerer was a fully grown man with, with an adaptive or an adaptative conscience and consciousness. In other words, he would easily relate with facts. Hallelujah. But to think that even while the Christ was present then and Christ was saying, he that has seen me has seen the Father. And in Samaria, Simon was saying, I am the great power of God. Will tell you of the kind of seed that was in Samaria and where that seed came from. I have helped you understand where that seed came from. Samaria did not have only Simon, the sorcerer, for the face of rebellion. No, there were many. The Bible says in Acts 8 and they called him the great power of God. It says from the least to the greatest. It means he had disciples. He mentored that very kind of seed. So there was a darkness that hovered over that city. In fact, it says Simon bewitched the entire city. Everyone in Samaria had a cloud of a spell, you see, that controlled them, that controlled them, including the politicians of that day and age. He bewitched the entire city. Think about it. Why was it easy for an entire city called Samaria to fall captive? Of witchcraft it's because they had rebelled from God there were altars in that place that sponsored the life and existence of spirits in fact when you study it tells you of how uh, while Philip was ministering spirits were speaking over people's heads that city was infiltrated with spiritual citizens. It was intermingled. They were meddling with spirits. And remember, every time the template of the spirit binds itself to the template of flesh and blood, which is of the earth, by all means, the course of flesh and blood will have to be agreeable with that which is spirit. Hallelujah. Acts 8, 7 says, For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them. Came out of many. How many were possessed? Many. Hallelujah. Many were possessed. And so I'd like to ask the question. If you look or took the example of that city, Samaria, and related it with the present time and day and age of the church, praise God. And how the world is evolving every other day. You'll understand, like the Bible puts it, 
the mystery of iniquity is on the rise. Hallelujah. The mystery of iniquity is on the rise. It says of how this world in the latter days there will be an increase of rebellion. 2 Thessalonians 2.7 For the mystery of iniquity is already at work. Is already at work. So you're literally having now on a wider scope the Samarian experience at work now on a wider scope. Hallelujah. But you see, like I said, the pattern of every movement of the Spirit, the pattern of every revival and awakening of the Spirit is found in the Word. It's found in the Word. Let's take this study of this great city. So, this experience of Philip and the Church of Jesus invading Samaria happened again about 31 and 32 AD. Just a year. A year after Pentecost. What you call Pentecost. Because in the time and space of Pentecost is when the Holy Spirit descends on the 120 glory to God which were in the upper room. But to even think that that fire did not burn out, was sustained a year later, only tells you that when God, and listen to me very well, when God ignites a fire of the Spirit in the church, you see, He sustains it. He sustains it. It's now incumbent upon the believer and how he is agreeable with the spirit to be aligned for that fire but that fire has not left the world I said that fire has not left the world the very fire that was lit in the upper room with the 120 has not left like there is physical inheritance there is such a thing as spiritual inheritance hallelujah it translates and moves through the wisdoms of impartation so some of us are carrying things that are older than us and these things have a track record of participating in ancient times. Oh, I, I don't know if someone understood what I just said. So it worked on Peter. And now by the spirit of impartation, God has transported into us the very virtue that framed the glory of Peter's day. And now it abides in us. Spiritual inheritance. It comes through imitations. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. And it's through that imitation that you are able to remind. He says, who will remind you? Talks of Timothy, Paul speaking. Who will remind you of my ways? That means we can manifest the very face of what the church was in Samaria. You see, in our day and age, in our country, in your country, in your nation. That's what it means. There's such a thing as spiritual inheritance. Oh, you, you're saying, show it to us. Give me the book of Acts 26. Sante de broko takabaliva ante sekea. 
Dakot Baharin Som Britalisa Kahaete. Acts 26 from verse from verse 16. Spiritual inheritance. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee. 17. Delivering the people, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. Now look at this, to open their eyes and to turn them from, in, from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins. Now look at this, and inheritance among them which are sanctified. An inheritance among them which are sanctified. It talks about receiving the inheritance of the sanctified. The inheritance that exists with the sanctified. In this case, he's talking about the saints. What operated with Paul did not go with him. It stayed. But it stayed for <laughs> to be inherited. Like when you die, you don't go with the house you built. You don't go with the land titles. You don't go with your assets and your property. No. No. And for that legacy of your worth to continue, the wisdom of inheritance is endorsed. Hallelujah. So much so that yes, you have given the right of possession of your property to your children. But every man that beholds that property will see you. They will remember your labors. They will, the face of what you were will stay among the people. This is it. Paul went to be with the Lord. Peter went to be with the Lord. James went to be with the Lord. John went to be with the Lord. But you see, that which they inherited stayed for us to inherit. That's why I said it's through the wisdom of impartation and imitation that the virtues and the displays of God in cities like Samaria can continue, can be continued through us. Through us. You see, in the Samarian experience we are to encounter of our day and age. There is always a Samarian realm in every realm. It's always there. You know why? Because the God of this age, Satan, hallelujah, the Bible says of how he has patterned the course of them which are disobedient. So that the Samarian experience is still a part of the world. What we have in Acts chapter 8 was for our learning. But it was not for us, for us to, 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 to assert the depletion of the Samarian realm. That realm still exists. It was included or spoken about in Acts chapter 8 that we will learn on how to go about with the Samarian realms. So praise the Lord. Even in Uganda, you have the Samarian realm. It might be next door, your neighbor. It, it might be at your school, even in South Africa, Kenya, the Samarian realm. The spirit that now walketh among the children of disobedience. Hallelujah. By this wisdom now we know. We know how to star movements of the spirit in those realms. We know how to light up the fires 
of the kingdom in those realms. But more to that, to be successful as a ministry or a minister in such a, a geographical positioning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Let's go back to Acts chapter 8. There's, there's a few highlights I, I would like for you to, to give attention to in that, that narrative. Hallelujah. For, for, for some time now, uh, I'll just touch something. I'll take this Samarian realm for our case study. And why am I interested in meticulously having this conversation with us? It's because he says these things were aforewritten for our learning from this experience through the help of the teacher of the word of God. You can learn something. The word there to learn is not just to be informed. The word there to learn is to receive information, but also the deposition of the spirit that can allow you to operate in the information you have received. It's not just the depositing of information, but the spirit behind that message that you will operate in the same. So for me again, this is the reason why I discipline myself this way to meticulously touch on these wisdoms. He says in Romans 15, for, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for your learning. The account of Acts chapter 8 was written for your learning. What you see in Samaria was written for your learning. It was not written for you to say, what? You mean people can bewitch people like that? What? You, 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 you mean Philip was that anointed? No. There's a reason why this was trapped in the lines of the Bible. But as you interact and intercourse with this testimony, you will be transformed, translated into the glory of the same that you behold. to later benefit or be of advantage to the Samarian realm of your day and age. You see, when we talk about the flows, I don't mean F-L-A-W-S, I mean F-L-O-W-S, the flow of God's power. Sonta paradia secreta ligrasaha. To again explain inheritance through impartation and imitation. This is one of the modalities by which God has contained his power on the face of the earth. You know of how he tells of how uh, they, 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 they know not of the scriptures and the power thereof. Praise the Lord. Scripture traps the power of God. Scripture traps the power of God. It's, it's an abode with which the power of God abides. And in the unveiling by the spirit of interpretation, praise God, to get the meaning of scripture in that unveiling you unveil power power is unveiled he says in Mark 12 24 and Jesus answering said unto them do you not therefore error because you know not the scriptures neither the power of God so the power of God and the scriptures okay are intertwined they move together. 
So the flows of God's power, the inheritance of the same through impartation and imitation is also provided for in the word, in the unveiling of the word. That's why he tells of the, 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 the forms of godliness that must be uh, perceived as abominable. The forms of godliness that are not to be put up with. The forms of godliness that men are not meant to entertain. He says they are such that do not express the power of God. He says they have a form of godliness. You see? But they forfeit the power of God. He says from such, from such turn away. Because the form of God can only be justified or distinguished with the power that gives meaning to that form. So that's what happens. He says the kingdom of God is not only in word, but also in the demonstration of the spirit and power of God. That's why Jesus Christ is not just the word become flesh. No, Jesus, the word become flesh. The Bible says of him, they beheld his glory as of the only glory of the father. That is the word in flesh, but also exhibiting the glory of the father. It also says of Jesus that he's not just the sanctification of God to us. He's not just the wisdom of God to us, but he is also the power of God unto us. What is of the word is of the power. What is not with power is not of the word, is not of the scripture. Thank you for tuning in. That was Hearing Jesus with Prophet Xavier Kale Alpha. To partner with us or for any other information, reach us through the details available on the screen. Christ Life Ministries International, Christ to Influence.